Okay, right here is a 1997 O&K RH200. The RH200 was first introduced by O&K at the Bama Trade Show in Munich, Germany in 1989. This was not O&K's first hydraulic excavator to break the 500 ton class. The first was the RH300, launched a decade prior. However, unlike the RH300, which was seen as somewhat of a failure to O&K, as the machine was discontinued due to the lack of sales during the 1980s recession, the RH200's fate, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. And by the mid-1990s, this machine was selling in numbers that were unheard of before for such a big machine, establishing the RH200 as the world-class market leader in the 500-ton hydraulic excavator class. Now, let's go and take a look at this big girl. Available from O&K in either backhoe or front shovel configurations, depending on what the customer preferred, the RH200 was designed to swing a rock bucket ranging anywhere from 21.6 to 29.6 cubic yard capacity in either short or long backhoe configurations and swing a bull clam ranging anywhere from 22.2 to 34 cubic yard capacity in front shovel configuration. This big girl is equipped with a 32.7 cubic yard bull clam. The RH200 shovel features O&K's cutting edge tri-power technology, which was probably one of the company's greatest engineering achievements when it was first introduced into the marketplace in 1982 with the launch of the model RH40C. For those who don't know what the tri-power is, it consists of the two triangular rotating pieces of steel mounted on each side of the shovel boom, and connected to them are the bucket cylinders, the hoist cylinders, and the tri-power link rods. What this does is it helps keep the digging geometry of the bucket at a constant position throughout the entire digging cycle, which gives the RH200 up to 50% more crowd force than competitive class machines by allowing the use of four cylinders instead of two to increase the force applied to curl the bucket. Other key benefits to this design feature include pressure-free retraction of the boom and stick cylinders, reduced reverse bucket spillage, and increased bucket fill factor by as much as 115 percent in certain applications. Additionally, the tri-power link rods transfer all the forces generated from the digging cycle down to the front of the machine superstructure, thus pushing the front of this excavator down, which prevents the machine from being pushed backwards when the shovel goes to force its bucket into a bank of material. And on the side of the stick, you can see where it says, O&K Tri-Power. Here you can see where the two boom cylinders connect to the superstructure. Up top you can see the two stick cylinders. And you can see where the two bucket cylinders connect to the back of the bull clam to curl the bucket in or out. Mounted below the operator's cab, you can see the emergency access ladder. 55-inch crawler shoes were standard for the RH200. However, O&K also offered optional wider 63-inch and 71-inch crawler shoes depending on the type of ground surface that this machine would be working on. Each crawler shoe on this machine weighs nearly one ton and this machine has a top travel speed of 1.44 miles per hour. To help give you an idea of the sheer size of an RH200, this excavator measures 26 feet 10 inches tall from the ground to the top of the operator's cab and 25 feet 10 inches wide.
Now, let's go up on top of the RH-200. As you can see, this RH-200 is equipped with a hydraulically powered man basket to allow safe access for operators and mechanics to get on and off this machine. Now let's go up. Okay. The RH-200 is a twin-engine excavator, and one of the benefits to a twin-engine machine is that if one of these engines were to break down while the machine were in operation, the operator would still have enough power from the second engine to move the machine to a safe place away from the high wall for repair, which enhances safety. Through this door is the engine room. Let's go inside and check it out. The RH-200 is powered by twin Cummins KTA-38C V12 diesel engines, which work together to produce 2102 horsepower for this machine. And for customers who prefer an electric hydraulic machine, O&K offered the RH-200 with optional electric power, powered by a 1600 kilowatt electric motor. Each engine on this machine drives four hydraulic pumps on each gearbox, which consist of two axial piston main pumps, each developing 244 GPM to power the front attachment and travel functions, and two swashplate swing pumps, each developing 93 GPM to power the swing system. The pumps cross feed and the RH200's pump managing system will pull additional oil flow from two or four pumps based on demand from joystick position and load. The pump managing system does this by continually measuring the actual values of the engine output and hydraulic system and compares these values with stored target values, thus permitting improved pump precision. And the benefit to this is virtually no power loss, lower oil temperatures, and increased fuel savings. In addition, each engine also drives a single servo pump to power the pilot control circuit, along with two gear type cooling pumps, each developing 132 GPM to deliver high volume, low pressure oil to the oil coolers. This compartment, which is located directly below the operator's cab, is the electronic room, and inside of there are all of the computers, relays, and electronics that work this machine. Mounted in between the engines is the hydraulic oil reservoir tank, which you can see right here. The hydraulic system on the RH-200 contains 1980 total gallons of oil. And here you can see the high pressure filters. Four high torque axial piston motors geared to planetary transmissions and multi-disc brakes power this machine's closed loop swing circuit, which features torque control for minimal energy consumption during acceleration and energy recycling during braking. And in the center, you can see the rotary distributor and travel valves. And through this door, here you can see the second Cummins diesel engine. And here you can see the second set of hydraulic pumps. Now, let's go up top.
Where I am standing right now is on top of the oil cooling module. This machine contains four hydraulic oil coolers, which cool the oil by use of thermostatically controlled fans. And the hydraulic cooling system on the RH200 is completely independent from all main circuits. From here you can get a good overview of the top of the engine house on this machine. You can see the two sets of air intake and air cleaning units for each engine. And in the back are two sets of mufflers and tailpipes for each engine. The main control valve block is mounted on the back of the boom of this machine to provide better access to the swing motors and rotary distributor below. This exact design feature is also incorporated on the backhoe attachment. And here you can see all of the hydraulic hoses that run out to power the shovel attachment in the front. Now let's go inside the operator's cab. From here you can get a good overview of the operator's cab on an RH200. Okay, the two joysticks that you see on the right and left side control all the digging functions of the front shovel out in front, or if the machine were set up as a backhoe. These two foot pedals that you see on the floor control the travel functions on this machine. Each foot pedal controls each individual track, just like on a smaller hydraulic excavator. This third pedal that you see over here on the left side controls the clam functions. You push forward and use your toe to open the clam and push back and use your heel to close the clam. Off to the right side you can see the O and K board control system, which consists of the control tower, which you see right here, and the digital display screen. The control tower contains all the switches to control the right and left side diesel engines, and you can see other switches to work other various functions on this machine, such as the headlights and windshield wipers. Here you can see the digital display screen and all the gauges. This will monitor the entire machine when it's in operation. And from here you can get a crystal clear operator's view of what the operator would see if he were running an RH200. Each engine on this machine is equipped with its own 1,355 gallon diesel fuel tank, which is mounted below the engine and alongside of the superstructure. You can see one right here, and the other is on the opposite side. Each crawler on this machine is powered by a pair of two-stage axial piston motors geared to a planetary transmission. And take note that both the motors and the hydraulic lines that run to power the motors are encased under these metal guards. And this is to protect the motors and the hydraulic lines from any rocks, dirt, or falling debris when the shovel is in operation.
The RH200 is equipped with a centralized service fluid filling station, which you can see right here. This is hydraulically operated, and when lowered down, it will allow the fuel man or mechanic to plug into any one of these ports that you see and fill this machine with fluids such as diesel fuel, engine oil, hydraulic oil, or grease from right here. And from here you can get a good view of the superstructure on this machine. And on the back of this machine, 60 ton counterweight. You can see the vents for the engine radiators, and in the center you can see where it says O and K. The overall operating weight of an RH200 in front shovel configuration can range anywhere from 529 to 539 tons. And in backhoe configuration, the overall operating weight of this machine can range anywhere from 529 and a half to 542 tons. In December of 1997, ONK announced it would sell its mining excavator division to Terex Mining Incorporated, and by early 1998, the deal was complete. That same year, the RH200, along with all ONK shovels, surrendered their legendary red and white colors to the new gray and red colors of Terex Mining. The new Terex RH200 featured many improvements over the original machine, including an increase in power, and an increase in operating weight. Later on in December of 2009, Terex announced it would sell its mining division to Bucyrus International, and by February of 2010, the $1.3 billion deal was complete. However, the O&K hydraulic excavators would not fly the Bucyrus colors for long. Only seven months later, in November, Caterpillar announced they would acquire Bucyrus International, and by mid-2011, the $8.6 billion deal was complete, and the former O&K RH200 was renumbered the Caterpillar 6050. But there she is, the world-class market leader in the 500-ton hydraulic excavator class the O&K RH200.